Hi, it's Will. In this fifth video out of a series, we're going to wire up the audio uh, signal processing part of our volume plugin and get this volume plugin going. Now, in the last video, we went over the different parts of the GUI that we had, and the block diagram was here, and we created all the parameters that we're going to need. Now, this is just a volume plugin, and I'm going to uh, do some stuff a little bit differently here than what's in the SDK to give you a different sort of take on it. But I'm going to pretend like this is a really complicated plugin a little bit later on. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a internal plugin variable called volume cooked. I'm going to initialize it to the value 1. This is going to be the cooked volume value that we're going to get after we convert the db value that the user has entered in on the GUI uh, into this number. And so we're going to wind up scaling our input and output audio streams by this uh, scaling factor. Now the equation for converting db into the scaling factor is really easy. It's 10 to the db over 20. But we're going to pretend a little bit later on like it's a very, very complicated, uh, very CPU intensive function. Now, in order to demonstrate uh, this other a way to arrange your code, we're going to create a, another function here called update parameter, parameters. All of the book projects and all of the sample projects are going to use this paradigm of having a update parameter function that's going to take information from the bound variables and move that information into the internal parts of our plugin. In this case, we're going to be moving that information into our cooked volume variable. In the book plugins, we use C++ objects to do that. So we take our GUI parameter information and send that into the C++ objects, which do all the work. There's no reason to develop a C++ object just for this little volume control. So that's what I'm doing here. So I'm going to go ahead and cut and paste the update parameters function. I'm going to paste it over here in the plugin core.cpp file. I'm going to put it right after the initialize function right here, just where it's going to be handy for us. And we'll talk about um, how we're going to, going to be calling this in a minute. Now, I've already got the parameters assigned. And we're going to have to make a decision as to when we want to convert that volume in dB value into our cooked variable, which is going to be here. I'm going to do that inside of this function. And then that way, we can call this function whenever we want to have that happen. So the cooked volume is going to be pow 10.0 comma volume underscore db divided by 20.0. So there is our well-known equation for converting a value in, uh, in db into a cooked value. Now let's see what this is saying here. Yeah, sorry, misspelled it myself. So here is our, uh, our converted value, and this is going to be our cooking function. This is the function which is going to convert that bound variable data into something else that we're using inside of the plugin. So we're going to talk about how that's going to get wired up in a second. Right now, I'd like to jump out and take a look at a sort of grand scheme of things as to how we're doing this processing. Sorry about that. And this is what's going to go on during the audio processing loop. The DAW is going to take the audio input and demux it and convert it into channel buffers, left, right, center, etc. Each channel gets its own buffer. It will then call a process of buffers function on the internal plugin, and the plugin will go through a three part mechanism for dealing with that function call. In the first part, the plugin is going to read the parameters and cook the variables, meaning it's going to take plugin parameters coming from the GUI and transfer them into internal variables inside of the plugin. Then we're going to process the audio buffers, and then we're going to write the parameter information out. That information is going to be VU meter information that's going to go out to the VU meter on the GUI. In today's, in, in this lesson, in this video, we're only going to process the audio. We're going to wait and do the VU meter when we actually design the GUI for it. So we're going to be dealing with these first two parts right here. The next thing is, uh, although all audio processing is done in buffers in the, in the plugin shell, in the plugin core, we're going to process everything in frames. A frame is one sample from each channel. So a stereo frame has a left and a right sample. 
So when we do frame processing, the way that that works is we read the parameters and cook the variables in step number one. Step number two, we process the audio buffers by breaking them into end frames, and then we go through a for loop, and we will call the process audio frame function one time for each of these frames that we process. That process audio frame function is in our project, and we will have to go into that code. Here's, pro here's plugin core process audio frame. So there is the frame function that's gonna get called repeatedly, and we're gonna need to do our audio processing work inside of that. Now we have two options here. One of them is to process our GUI, GUI variables on each buffer, and the other is to process them on each frame. You remember that we enabled parameter smoothing, and uh, to, to use parameter smoothing, the way that it works is on each frame, we'll break it into a frame create the frame and then smooth the parameters, recook the variables, and then process that audio frame. So when we use parameter smoothing, we are going to use up some CPU power because we have to do the parameter smoothing. That's gonna take a couple of multiplies and a couple of adds. And then we're gonna to have to cook the variables and convert them into useful information for the plugin. In the case of our plugin here, we're gonna to have to convert that DB value into a cooked value using the POW function. So we only have one, uh, one little trigonometric, well not really trigonometric, a power function here to, to make that conversion happen, but that cooking could, could be a very complicated function in uh, other plugins, and I wanna address that and talk about that in this video. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's look at the function that's gonna read the parameters and cook the variables. If we go back into our Xcode project here, we can see that we have three functions, all one after another. Pre-process audio buffers, followed by process audio frame, followed by post-process audio buffers. So the pre-process audio buffer will get called first at the top of the process cycle. In this function, we'll call the sync inbound variables method. Now this has already been written for you, so there's nothing to write here, we're just observing. It is in this function that we will transfer the variable information from the GUI into those variables that we set up. After this gets called, the base class will break the buffer into frames and it will call process audio frame over and over and over and over again on those frames until the buffer is completed. After the buffer is completed in its processing, the base class will then call post-process audio buffers in this case, we are going to call a function update outbound variables, and that writes the VU meter data out for us. Again, all this has been written for us, we're just observing it here. This means that we're gonna to have to pay our attention to process audio frame, which is where all the work is gonna happen, as well as the point where we want to convert that volume variable into our cooked volume here, meaning running the power function on that. So in this first iteration, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pretend that the update parameters method here is extremely CPU intensive. And so I do not want to update this parameter on every buffer, um, on every frame. I wanna do this on every buffer instead. So the way that I would do that is I would call update parameters from right here at the end of pre-process audio buffers We'll sync our inbound data, then I will call update parameters. That will cook the volume control variable, and I will use that same cooked variable to process the entire buffer through all of these repeated calls to process audio frame. Now, if I don't wanna do that, if I want to, to use the parameter smoothing that I built in, then what I'll do is I'll take this function out and I'll relocate it, and I will call the function in process audio frame after sample accurate parameter update. Now if I call my update parameters function here, it is going to recook this volume variable each time that the process audio frame function is called. With parameter smoothing turned on, the value of, of volume in DB is going to change ever so slightly between each process audio frame called as I move the slider around. 
when I let go of the volume control and don't move it anymore, then we will still call do sample accurate parameter updates, but it will detect that the smoothing operation isn't needed and it won't run the smoothing operation. So the, the best thing to do is, if you're confused about it, put your updates after the sample a, uh, accurate parameter updates function here. They're gonna get called every single frame, but it will be the smoothest way to do it. Then later, if you decide that you're using a, too much of the CPU in order to do this parameter updating, you can push that back out into pre-process audio buffers. So the way that I've got it set up now is I'm gonna come into process audio frame, I am gonna call do sample accurate parameter updates, and then I am gonna update the volume control and cook it then I'll be ready to use it inside of the, uh, the function. Okay, one last thing before we get into that. The uh, Aspic plugins for audio effects plugins are set up automatically to handle either one mono in, one mono out channel, one mono in, one stereo out channel, and one stereo in, one stereo out channel. And the logic for decoding that is in the last part of this process audio frame function down here. The first part of that decides to see if we are a synth plugin. And if we're a synth plugin, then we're going to operate in this little chunk of code. Because we're not a synth plugin, I'm going to go ahead and just delete that all together. And now at this point, we can decode our in incoming channels and figure out how to deal with our volume uh, plugin. So we've got the update parameters in place, and I'm gonna do a quick check now on the volume control. And I wanna make sure that my volume control is working. And after I do that quick check, then I'm gonna go back and put the stereo left, right, channel selection, and the mute function in. In fact, in fact we're gonna do that in the next video. So in this video, we're gonna check the volume to make sure that the volume control is, is working. So I've updated the parameters there. My raw, or sorry, my cooked volume value is inside of here. At this point, I can now go through and say, okay, for mono in, mono out, the uh, audio output frame channel zero, which is the left channel, is the audio input frame channel zero, which is the left input channel, times that, that volume value. So volume cooked times the input audio sample. I'll do that one more time. The left channel comes in in the audio input frame zero slot of the uh, data that comes inside, into us in the argument for this function. The output audio sample is here in output audio frame zero. So this piece of code is gonna scale the input by the volume cooked value and write it to the output. I'm gonna cut and paste this again for this little if statement. This is if we have a mono input and a stereo output. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna write the audio input left frame or left sample into the left and right outputs after scaling it by the volume value here. I'm gonna do the same thing one more time here. This is the stereo in, stereo out code, and this is gonna scale that information. I'm gonna compile it now and test it, and in the next video, we're gonna come back and we'll look at these ver values a little bit more and talk about this again, and we'll finish up the code for this plugin. So I'll go ahead and build it. I'm only building the AU portion of this universal project, and it has built. And so now I'm going to run Logic Pro X. Now remember, I'm on a Mac and this is AU, and that means that the plugin has automatically been written for me after the build was finished. And it's sitting and it's waiting in the proper location. Here is my, uh, my Logic Audio track that I've already set up, and I'm gonna go to the Audio FX here, Audio Units, the name of the company was Aspic, and the plugin is Volume Plugin I. I'm gonna use the Stereo Volume Plugin, and lo and behold, this is what pops up a completely blank plugin. That's totally okay, that's what's supposed to happen. This is, we, we don't have a GUI for our plugin yet, we're gonna do that in another video. And I'm gonna go here to editor and change this to controls. This is gonna give me the default volume plugin controls here, and this volume slider has now been linked and bound in with our volume DB variable, which has been cooked into the volume cooked variable. 
So as I play this, I should be able to move the slider around and have it affect the volume. And lo and behold, it does affect the volume. You'll notice that if I move it around rapidly, there aren't any clicks or pops. Like this. That's because of the parameter smoothing that we have put in place. So we've got our volume control working. We've got it connected to this slider and we're actually processing audio. In the next video, we'll go ahead and implement the rest of the audio processing, which is the mute and the channel setup, as well as write the VU data out to the VU meter. So we'll do that one in the next video.